Let me give you a piece of advice. He knows more than you can possibly imagine about photography. At last, welcome to you. As you no doubt have guessed, I am Michael Wessel. Do you believe in film photography? Let me tell you why you are here. Digital is a prison for your mind. Do you want to know what I'm talking about? The dark room? Do you know what it is? The dark room is the world where you open your eyes and it does you no good where you can't see your film while you're processing it. Fortunately, I can show you. Take the dip and dunk tank and continue this video. Take the daylight tank and go to the second video. What the hell? Are we doing trade of element two? Oh, I guess we are. So go to the third video for the trade of element. Let's go into the dark room and see how deep the drain goes. We're back in the dark room and we're going to be looking at development tanks and how to actually do dip and dunk tanks. These tanks are called Yankee tanks. So these uh, particular tanks that we'll be using are going to be uh, holding our film holders during development and we'll use a dip and dunk process. Uh, the first tank is gonna be filled with developer. The second tank is gonna be stop bath. The third tank is going to be fixer, and the fourth tank is going to be hypo clear. And then back here in this back tank, we've got some photo flow to actually uh, finish up with. Of course, we're gonna do this in complete darkness. There is no, not gonna be any light in here, so we would shut off the lights to actually do this. Uh, one of the other things that you want to consider doing before you actually start this process, if you've never done it before, is to take your, um, um, do this whole process in the light like this with some sample film. Just grab a couple of sheets of film uh, and load your film holders, um, in, you know, just in the light so you know how to do it. Then uh, turn off the lights, do it again so that you feel comfortable doing it. And then once you're comfortable in the dark room, uh, try doing it for real. So um, go about it that way. So let's take our film holders now and we're going to um, do our practice here. Uh, we've got our film in here, our dummy film. Let's get started in putting them in the film holders. So we're gonna gently open up our film holder, grab the film uh, by the edge. We do not want to actually uh, grab it in the center or touch it with the, in the center of the film. We'll get, uh, get a, um, a holder here. We're going to put the emulsion side so that the emulsion side of the film, which is uh, also our uh, where our notches are on our film, we're gonna make sure that it is facing away from us. And at, so it's at the top right. And as I slide this down into the film holder, just like this, it's gonna slide down in here. Sometimes they'll get a little stuck. If they do, just uh, gently just get them back in there. And then once you have that, uh, you're gonna flip this up just like that to get the, um, the clip spring at the top to hold uh, over the top of the film so that it won't actually be able to come out. Once you have that in there, we're going to take that and put that into our, um, uh, into our film rack. And this, will, this rack will hold up to eight sheets of film, so we can do up to eight sheets of film. I only have four in here, so I don't actually technically need the other racks in here. Um, again, I'm gonna, uh, in the complete darkness, I'm going to take out another sheet of film. And this time, I'm gonna um, just do this over here. 
And I've got my uh, sheet of film here. I've got my, I found my notches. And as I load this in, I'm going to actually slide this in with notches up in the top right so that the emulsion side is facing towards the interior. And as I slide this down in here, I need to make sure that the uh, film, uh, the uh, the spring is uh, is put back, and then just slide the film in very gently, and then put the spring holder back in place. Once that is in place, then I can then put it into my rack, just like that, and that gets me two sheets of film loaded into my rack. Dark, you can actually film before the notches in the uh, rack to uh, be able to load them. Make sure that you uh, you may have to count the number so that you uh, put them in and you don't get them sideways into the um, film holder. We're gonna grab the last sheet of film here. Grab it, pull it out. Again, you wanna be very careful with your film so that you're not putting uh, dings in the film. Any dings in the film can actually damage the film. Uh, any fingerprints on the film can actually damage the film too. So load your film in very carefully and um, as you put it in. Once I have my film, uh, my rack full, I am ready to get started with the dip and dunk process. For this uh, demonstration, I'm just gonna put water in here. I've got a, a, a tank over to the side here that is actually full of developer. But to practice this and make sure that I'm actually covering my film, I'm gonna grab one of the film holders here and put it in the tank, in an empty tank here, and we're going to make sure that the amount of liquid goes over the top of the um, actual film area. So as I pour this into this empty tank, I'm going to see how much liquid, this is uh, 2,000 milliliters here, or 2,000 cc's of uh, liquid. It's not quite covering the top of my um, film yet, so I need a little bit more. I can usually, put, I usually can put in here about uh, 1,300 milliliters. Or 1,400 mil, uh, um, or 2,000, I'm sorry, 2,400 milliliters. Um, once I have that amount of liquid in here, it's usually above uh, the uh, surface of my film. That means that my film is gonna get completely submerged. So now I know that I need, in this particular Yankee tank, I'm going to definitely need to have 2,400 milliliters of uh, developer in here. Now, you, if you, it depends on the developer that you're using. If you're using uh, D76 like we are, or you could use HC110, or uh, Select All, or any other film developer, it's up to you to decide on what type of film developer that you want to use. Um, we're going to fill up this tank using that developer. Um, I typically, with my students, will use um, uh, one to one chemistry for the D76. So, what we'll do is we'll fill this halfway up. That means 1,000. Um, 200 milliliters of liquid and then of this of the stock um, developer and then 1,200 milliliters of water on top of that and that'll make our 2,400 milliliters of liquid here in the tank. Um, I do the same thing for these other tanks, uh, 2,400 milliliters of sot bath, 2,400 milliliters of fixer, and 2,400 milliliters of hypo clear. Uh, these uh, Yankee tanks come with lids. These lids uh, I'm going to take off and just place to the side. Um, we would need to look up our film time for our film. Uh, if it's uh, depending on the film type that you're using, if you're using T-Max, uh, 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 Il an Ilford product, whatever you're using, uh, look up your development time for that particular film. And if it's at stock, also check your temperature. For this, we need to then do that. So for, uh, for this, I'll need a temperature gauge. I grabbed a temperature gauge. We're gonna put that into the developer because this developer needs to be at around 68 degrees um, for our processing. You'll need to adjust the time for the warmth, uh, the warmth of that developer. Uh, for example, this is at uh, 71 degrees. I'm definitely going to want to um, go um, check the computer to actually see what my time is going to be uh, for development for my film. So uh, for this, I know it's about six minutes.
um, as I've looked it up before. So the, I believe I've got HP 5 um, going on here. And uh, so it's going to be about six minutes. Uh, you might go to digitaltruth.com, which is a great way of actually finding information, that information using the massive development uh, time charts. And there's a great way to actually uh, find information about how to, to uh, develop your film times and your temperatures. Um, since we've got our time and our temperature, we need to set that on our clock. So I've got a clock here. I'm going to turn on the clock. Make sure your clocks, um, this one's a little low right now. I'd probably put it up here on the top shelf. Um, you don't want something that's going to glow in the dark room and actually uh, uh, illuminate your film because that can actually cause damage to your film. Make sure you don't have your cell phone on or anything like that as you're working because uh, any kind of lights will actually destroy your film. So make sure that all lights are uh, uh, off. We're going to put our six minutes on here. And um, once I am ready to go here, I'll put, I would dip my tank in here. So I'm ready to pretty much start the processing. So I'm gonna take my tank and I'm going to dip it into the uh, solution here. Once it's in, I'll start my clock. I'm going to gently pull it out, angle it, let it drip off, pull it out, angle it again at about a 90 degrees, let that liquid drip off, back and forth, for the first uh, 20 to 30 seconds, very slowly. Don't go too fast because if you go too fast, one of the issues that this can, uh, what can ha happen with these tanks is that uh, if you're going too fast with agitation, uh, the uh, tanks can uh, be problematic. Once you get them in there, tap them, get those bubbles off. Make sure that you tap it really well because you want any bubbles that are on the film to come off of the film. Uh, once that uh, it's uh, set and ready to go here, uh, we'll wait until it gets up to the zero here, and then we're going to do our we're going to do um, another uh, three uh, turns of this, um, and have lifting our film up and uh, for the dip and dunk. This is causing agitation. It keeps the film from being uh, getting stale in the uh, development uh, process, so that the developer actually is moving around it. So we'll take it out, let it drip, back in. Slowly, don't go too fast with this. Should take you about 20 seconds to do this. And then back into the tank and that's our agitation is over and done with. And we'll do this for the entire six minutes. While we're waiting, I just wanted um, to reiterate that in, um, with, our film, uh, with our holders that are holding our film, these have little, um, little holes in them along the sides, bottom, and, and uh, around all the sides here. These um, allow the liquid to be pulled into and against the film as it's uh, being put, down, put in and uh, agitated. As it's agitating that way, that what liquid is going to squirt across. So we're right back at our zero um, time. So again, we're going to uh, pull it out 90 degrees. Do it again. Gently do this for the first 20 seconds, or that 20 seconds. And once it's done at the 20 second mark, again, tap, tap, tap. Get those bubbles off of there. Make sure that it is good to go. Again, as I was saying, what the holes do is allow the uh, uh, liquid to come up and rush across the film plane. If it does it too quickly, it can actually cause marks on the film by overdevelopment of certain areas. So make sure that you're not going like this and doing this really quickly, because if you do, basically what's going to happen is it's going to cause those streaks on your film from over agitation. So don't over agitate your film as you're going along. And that was our 20 seconds and it's back in. Tap, 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 get those bubbles off. Make sure that there isn't any bubbles on our film. We don't want uh, to have bubbles. The bubbles will actually show up in our development uh, process or after we're done developing, they'll look like uh, little round circles on the film. Uh, that would be, um, you know, that's gonna actually be in your image when you go to print. So we won't want that to happen. Uh, we're going to uh, move on now from our developer on over to our stop bath. As, and uh, we're going to go ahead and fast forward here. We're now going to move our film from the developer to the stop bath. Um, to do that, we'll just uh, we're going to set our timer to one minute, and then we'll grab our film and uh, get, take it out, let it drain. 
once it's drained, what we're going to do now is move it over to the stop bath. We'll put it in the stop bath for one minute. We'll start our timer. Again, we want to agitate this um, very slowly and for that whole entire minute. So we're going to actually agitate this film for one minute exactly. And we're going to do it slowly for every about every five seconds or so. We'll lift it up and pull it out. Tilt it uh, at a 90 degree angle. Also make sure that your uh, your uh, uh, tanks aren't too close together so that you don't actually gently spill uh, lick, uh, any of the liquids going upwards. Uh, if uh, the uh, stop bath got into the developer, that's going to be bad, or a fixer got into the developer or stop bath, that's going to be bad. So you want to make sure that you're keeping your chemistry going in a straight line. And as you hit the one minute mark, uh, you're going to uh, be uh, finish this up here, so we're at about one minute. <clears throat> and once we're done at uh, the one minute mark, we're going to hit our stop on our clock. And we're going to move now to the fixer. So the fixer is next. We're going to drain our stop bath. We're going to move this over to the fixer, put it in the fixer. And I'm going to tap, 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 get any bubbles off of it set my clock to five minutes, hit start, and then I'm going to agitate just like I did for developer. For the first 30 seconds, I'm going to agitate the, um, the film um, as many times as I can in the first 30 seconds. Some people will agitate their in the fixer. They'll agitate uh, their uh, film the entire time. Uh, I am of the uh, school that actually just for the first 30 seconds and then every 10, uh, 20 seconds afterwards, tap, 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 get that uh, uh, any of those bubbles off in the fixer, uh, let that go until it gets to the zero mark. Once it gets to the zero mark, I'm going to uh, make sure that I uh, pull it out. Uh, with the fixer, the fixer is now taking uh, and uh, fixing the uh, film so that uh, your image is going to be stable on your film. Uh, this is a five to 10 minutes for you to actually have it in, to, in the fixer. So when it hits the zero mark again here, we're just going to do the agitation again, do this slowly so that you don't cause any problems on the film itself. And we're doing this for 20 seconds. I can do it about three times for 20 seconds, put it in there, tap, 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 unless you're going to continuously agitate. If you're continuously agitating, just keep going at your agitation throughout the entire process. Um, once at five minutes, so let's say we've hit our five minute mark and we're going to turn off our, uh, uh, since this is dummy film, we're gonna go ahead and set this back to zero here. Once we've reached our five minute mark, or, uh, we can turn on the lights and we can actually check the film. So we can flip on the lights, check the film and make sure that it is processed properly. If it has a slight bit of a pink tint to it, um, it well, it depends on the film. If you have T-Max film, it may still have a little bit of a pink film uh, uh, color to it. But if it's uh, normal or if it's uh, mostly a Ilford products or any other um, any other films, most of the time, if it has a pink tinge to it um, or a purple tinge, your fixer hasn't fixed it properly yet. Maybe the fixer is starting to die. Maybe you've uh, run through the chemistry multiple times and your fixer's dead. You could either uh, add a new fixer to this uh, at this point or run it for another five minutes and, and uh, uh, make sure that the film uh, is no lo is no longer pink when you pull it out of the fixer at the end of the time, and keep the lights off dark while you're doing that extra five minutes. Um, once we're done with the fixer and we've done our um, complete fixing time here, we are ready to move on to our hypo clear. Our um, so we'll set our clock over here for three minutes. We're going to move our. Uh, our development uh, tank or our uh, uh, rack here to the next tank, which is the HypoClear. We'll put this in our HypoClear. Once we have it in the HypoClear, we are going to start our timer. Tap, 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 get any bubbles off of there. And then um, we're going to do a continuous agitation for three minutes. So we're just going to do this at that same agitation for three minutes, constantly moving in and out. 
And of course, this can be in the light. You can do this uh, can, uh, while it's uh, light in the room. Uh, basically, all the HypoClear does is it removes the hypo or fixer from our film. So as we're doing this, we're trying to get as much fixer off of the film as possible. Um, you do not have to use HypoClear to do this. You can use a water wa uh, wash. Usually it's about 30 minutes of time to wash the film uh, if you go that route. If you uh, uh, do use HypoClear, uh, you're gonna cut your time of wash time down to 10 minutes so that when you put the, uh, wa uh, the film in the wash, uh, you're going to actually then uh, just wash it for 10 minutes instead. We've just got done developing our film and it's time now to run our film through the uh, washer. The washer needs to uh, uh, run for about 10 minutes. Our arch archival washer uh, will take about uh, uh, 10 minutes to run um, since we ran this through HypoClear. If you haven't run it through HypoClear, you might want to, uh, you'll need to uh, wash your film for about 30 minutes to an hour. Um, since we've our, um, run this through HypoClear, our next step is, is to run the washer for the 10 minutes. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna unload our film. We're gonna uh, pull the film out by the edge and putting the emulsion side, um, facing the emulsion side back towards the, um, the back of the film tank. We're going to place the uh, film in the slot. So this is just gonna slide down in the slot. I'm gonna stagger the film as I put it in here, um, just uh, so that uh, we, we can put the uh, lid on the top and, um, that will hold the film in place as the washer is washing the film. So we're gonna stagger these a little bit, make sure, and also it'll help to clean the film if I don't uh, load the whole entire uh, um, archival washer. This archival washer takes up to about eight sheets of film. So by staggering these, it also is just gonna keep the lid in place and it'll also keep, uh, get the film cleaner as it's working. We'll take the lid and put the lid on top of the film just like this. And then once that's in place, we're gonna turn the water on and make sure that the water is running at a fairly decent rate. We don't wanna overdo it. It doesn't need to be running really super fast. Just enough to make sure that the uh, water is uh, going over the film, um, spraying across the film, and um, then cleaning the film at, uh, of uh, fixer. Uh, this is, like I said, this is gonna take about 10 minutes to do. Uh, we're going to let it fill up. It'll do its. Um, it'll fill up, and it'll keep the uh, get the film nice and clean. And then what we'll do is we'll photo flow this afterwards. So let's go on to photo flow. We're now going to uh, uh, use photo flow to clean our negatives with and get the, any leftover chemistry off. Plus, it's um, um, photo flow is um, a detergent basically that is anti-static, so it should keep dust off of the uh, the film. To do this, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our sheet of film and just dunk it in the uh, liquid for about, 10 uh, for about 10 to 20 seconds, or up to a half minute. Um, just uh, about 10, 15 dunks is about all you really need. And we'll uh, dip it and dunk it until it's uh, ready. Once it's ready, what we're going to do next is we're going to take a squeegee and we're going to squeegee off the film itself. So we're gonna take the film and just put it between the squeegee and just run the squeegee down it real quick to get all the liquid off of it. Again, that's just one run. Uh, so if we've dipped it and we have it dunked, we can just take the squeegee and just run it once over the film. You don't wanna do it multiple times, just a single uh, uh, squeegee time is all you really need. Now we're gonna put this in the film dryer. We just got done squeegeeing our film. The film is still wet and we want to handle it with care. Make sure that you're handling it by the edges, that you don't actually touch the center of the film. Uh, we want to keep it as, uh, as clean as possible. We also want to get it in the dryer as quickly as possible. But the th couple of things that you need to know, make sure that the film dryer is off before you go to put the film in it so that you're not blowing dust on any other sheets of film. We've already loaded a couple of sheets of film in here from our chute. So we're going to take this uh, piece of film and get it into our dryer. The dryer's off. Let's open up the door 
And then we've got uh, racks in here for us to um, hang out uh, and hangers. We're gonna turn this hanger here so that um, we can put this uh, piece of film on here. We're just gonna hang it by one corner. Just clip it on that one corner and let it um, hang there. We wanna make sure that it's not gonna to touch any other sheet film in here that we've got hanging so that they don't stick together. Once we've got that in place and it's nice and hanging here uh, separately and it's not gonna to touch anything, then we're gonna go ahead and close the door here. Lock it and shut it tight. Uh, then we might grab another sheet of film if we had more film and do the next sheet of film. So from here, what we're going to do is, um, since we're loaded, we've got everything loaded in here. What we're going to do is we're going to set the timer up here to about 20 to 30 minutes. And uh, to do that, we'll just dial it in here. So 20 to 30 minutes. We're going to set our heat um, between medium and low. We don't want to go high with this. We don't want our film to get overheated really quickly and actually become brittle or break on us. So we're going to um, do this on about medium heat. We'll turn it on and let the fan start up as it goes. And this is going to allow us to get our film dry in a pretty reasonable amount of time. Generally, somewhere between 20 and 30 minutes is how long it takes. Let's say, for example, you need to walk out of the house or away from uh, the uh, studio or wherever your dark room, wherever you're drying your film and you don't have time to stay, leave the dryer off and let the film just sit and dry in the drying cabinet by itself, uh, air drying. Uh, that allow you to just be able to come back in in about 24 hours or less, probably 12 hours, uh, to come in, check your film, make sure it's completely dry. Once it's dry, you can take it out of the film cabinet. For our last step, what we're going to do is we're going to actually get our film out of the drying cabinet, which is right behind me, and we're going to put our film into sleeves. Sleeves come usually uh, for a four by five specifically, are going to just be have four different uh, um, places to put our film, and we'll take a look at this as I go along. So, And then I have a notebook to put them in to keep them nice and safe and clean. Uh, if you've got an enclosed notebook, that's better because it'll actually keep dust and uh, humidity out of the book as much as possible. Let's get started with uh, getting these out of the um, out of our uh, drying cloth, uh, cabinet. So we're gonna open up the drying cabinet and we wanna make sure this stays closed as uh, often as possible so that we don't get more and more dust in here. Um, the uh, timers went off, we are ready to pull these. Uh, as you saw when we hung these, a few minutes ago. It's been about 20 minutes. We've got our negative, our first negative. I'm going to put this in my, um, I'm going to put this emulsion side um, down or back in my sleeve so that when it goes into my sleeve, the, um, the notches should be on the top left hand corner. I'll slide that in there. And then this will go into my notebook as soon as I grab all the rest of the film. Let's take a look at actually uh, getting um, our chemistry put away or dumped. Uh, the first thing that we're going to do is if we're going to reuse the chemistry, the best way to actually reuse the chemistry is just to leave it in the tanks themselves uh, for the next use. Uh, most of my students uh, will be coming in at different points into the dark room and actually running their film at different times of the day. Check the chemistry for uh, to see if it's still good. Uh, one of those things, uh, the developer will go dark. So it'll get really dark. That's going to give you a signal that as soon as it turns a dark brown, a kind of a dark deep brown or a brown, uh, that the, uh, the chemistry is bad. If uh, you see that, if it's not clear any longer. Sometimes it will also turn a color. If it's a bluish color or it turns a greenish color, it's just because of the, uh, the film had um, a bit of a um, tint on it and that tint came off into the chemistry. That doesn't mean that the developer is actually bad. You can continue to use the developer. If it's when a brownish color though, that's when you're gonna to wanna to dump it. The same thing, and usually my rule is, is that if my developer bad, my uh, stop bath's bad too, so I'll dump them at the same time. Both of these two can go down the sink. Uh, please check with your local uh, rules on how to dump your chemistry. Uh, the se second two, the stop, or the uh, fixer and our um, hypoclear are a whole different matter. You really should in, um, catch these into some kind of uh, 
uh, system where it's going to pull the silver out of uh, the fixer and out of the hypoclear. These are the two that contain heavy metals. Uh, please definitely check with your local um, water um, uh, utility company to see what you can and cannot dump down the sink. Uh, if, uh, for the most part, the way that I've seen this done is if uh, if you live out uh, someplace where there's uh, you don't want to put it in your septic tank specifically, uh, one of the things you can do is uh, get a barrel and uh, cut a barrel open um, and have a, uh, a mesh put over the top of the barrel, dump the chemistry into the barrel and let it evaporate off. Then you can catch the heavy metals in the bottom of the, t of the uh, barrel over time after, it's, um, all, uh, after all the liquid has actually evaporated off. Uh, if you are in a dark room like this one, you can actually use uh, the, uh, uh, we have a, um, a uh, CPAC recovery unit uh, that is below the sink here. Um, we'll dump it over here on the side to get rid of uh, the chemistry. The chemistry will actually get uh, sent through the, uh, the recycler. Uh, it, will, um, it has a magnet in it that basically picks up all the heavy metals and then dumps the uh, rest of the chemistry into the water system. So it ends up going into the water system. It just removes all the heavy metals. If you're going to reuse the chemistry, so if you're going to continue to reuse the chemistry, um, these Yankee tanks specifically have a little um, a lid thing here that actually goes on the top and it just floats on the top of the liquid. So you just put it in gently, make sure it's floating, and then the next thing you can do is grab a lid and put the lid over the top. Now the lid, uh, the purpose of this is, is to uh, keep uh, as much um, oxygen away from the chemistry as possible while it's sitting in here so that it will stay good for you for a lot longer period of time. Uh, I found that usually somewhere between one to two weeks is about as long as this chemistry will last. Again, check your chemistry as you go along. So I've got my developer covered. Uh, the stop bath I'll cover. Same exact way, let the, uh, the float uh, on the top, and then I'll grab a lid and uh, put the lid on the, sur on the top of this. Uh, when I get to the fixer, the next thing that I'm going to do with the fixer is I'm going to use some hypo check or, um, or um, drops to actually check my chemistry to make sure it's still good. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this and I'm going to put three drops into uh, the uh, chemistry. If it turns a milky white and it looks like milk at that point, I know that the fixer is bad. Um, if that's the case, then I'll um, dump it down, this, uh, down my uh, drain over here and let it it'll get uh, uh, recaptured the silver. Uh, if uh, if it doesn't turn milky, then it's still good and I can continue to use it. So I'll go ahead and cap it. So I'll go ahead and put my cap on and also uh, my lid. Once I've got that lidded up here, and it kind of goes the same way with the, this. The way that I kind of look at this is if my um, hypoclear, or if my uh, fixer is good, my hypoclear is generally usually good. Um, some of the hypoclears uh, come with a uh, purple a agent in them to actually, um, it, the, it'll turn purple uh, if the uh, fi if the uh, stop, uh, if the hypoclear has gone bad. That goes the same with uh, with stop baths too. There are some stop baths with indicators that will actually turn purple if they're bad. So once we have these covered, these are now ready to go. Um, we are uh, to be used again. We can come back later and use these, or my students can come in and use these ke this chemistry to actually run their film back through. Um, let's now move on to our next development process. We've just got done doing our film development demo. That's the main part of this video. So now we're going to actually develop our film. Let's uh, get into developing our film in the dark. So we're going to, um, Tony, uh, if you would, please uh, pull the lights for us. Okay, I've got um, the film here, uh, uh, getting them loaded. Uh, Tony, does this look okay in the camera? Ah, uh, need a little, little left. Okay, I've got, I think, is that good? Yep, right there. Okay, excellent. All right, um, you need to make sure that as you're doing this, what you want to do is pull the film out at a certain angle uh, so that uh, you can actually see the film in the dark. Um, I can see this film just perfectly and everything is going okay, but I just realized something, Tony. Tony? I'm afraid of the dark, Tony. 